the prayer seminar. This is something for those who were involved in MSOS back in 2002, 2003. None of you are old geezers. I am now. I have gray hair. So we started this seminar, me, uh, after a session, myself and Sister Muslima uh, Purmal, those for those who know her, she's studying in Al-Azhar right now. And that came out, out, of, out of a workshop that we did for college students, Muslim college students, who are actually active on campus. So we're talking about the cream of the crops. So we're not talking about those who go into to cheetahs and pick food. I don't know these are not clubs. But we're talking to active Muslims, those who come to MSA meetings, whether they're hijabis or not, with beard or not. And one of the questions that we asked was, so how frequently, like we had a survey, and one of the things that we said, uh, how frequently do you miss your salah, or you combine? And the answer was, surprisingly, because we're talking to those who are supposed to be practicing, 50 to 75 percent on a regular basis, that's us, on a regular basis, miss salah, combine it, delay it, for no reason. So we want to address the subject matters, going back to fundamentals. What are you going to do? The seminar usually is four sessions, six to eight hours long. What are you going to spend six to eight hours talking about Salah? You can talk actually a few days if you want about Salah. So uh, they want, you guys want the drive through version, which is like one hour long or so, and he wants to bring everything. Khushu and scares and importance and fiqh and everything. So uh, I, I'll not do that with you, inshallah. I'll try to take bits and pieces. Uh, from the seminar, I just want to hopefully relate to you some of the thoughts uh, from that uh, seminar. Usually it's four sessions long. The first session usually talks about uh, defining what prayer means, the importance, the virtues, uh, the punishment for those who do not pray, delay, combine. And then second session is, so the first one is people call the informational, inspirational, and the second one will be more fit to talk about loop specifically. Because, um, you know, I've did, I did some youth work for quite some time, and I can tell you, already you go to Salat al-Jum'ah, maybe 50% of Muslims who pray Jum'ah, their Salat is not accepted, because they don't have one of the prerequisites of Salat, which is making it look properly. Something should take maybe five minutes to teach. We do not really have it down properly, as Muslims. And third was, uh, is about, uh, um, also it's, it's fiqhi matters, about jurisprudence issues, that what's mandatory in Salat and what's uh, sunnah. Should put my hands here or here? Should I do this or no? One time, uh, many of that, that stuff, and, and try to break it down and see what's the fun. So you don't miss. And the last one is about kushu. So what I'm going to do today is drop the middle part. I'll leave it to the Q and A sessions, but try maybe combine some thoughts from the first session and last session. Inspirational, informational, and spiritual. Hopefully, we can make some sort of merging. That sounds good or no? Mm -hmm. Yes. Thoughts. How many of you have attended this seminar in the past? Well, I know that one went there to Okay, three, four. So, so I can't ask the question. Okay, so here's here's what I have in, in mind, inshallah. Maybe you can tell me if this will work or not. I'm I'm trying. I would like to define what salah means. Speak about the virtues a little bit, or the importance virtues, and then we can jump into inshallah ta'ala, maybe about the khushu. Make sense? Kabish. Okay. I'll probably forgot all the notes from, I don't know when was the last time I did it. You know what? Okay, good. All right. So, why do we have a problem with prayer? I think the biggest problem is, is not because we're, you know, as Ustaz Abu Khalid says, it's not just, oh, it's just a difficult thing to do. I believe it's because we do not know what it means. We pray five times a day. Some of us do, some of us do three, you know, three and a half, and four quarters and stuff. But it's really that, I don't know what Salah means. Why, why, why you want to, here's the main objective that we did the seminar, because of this main thing. You know, if you ask someone, go pray. Why? What did your parents tell you? Pray. Because if you don't pray, what's going to happen? Huh? You're going to hell fire. So the motive is what? It's fear. You know, when he told me scare us, when he told me scare us, I don't like to give that, that session about death anymore because it becomes like, I'm like it's like Halloween night. Everybody, I want to get scared so I can stop praying. And I believe that, you know, we should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But definitely that should not be the motive to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it should not be, I'm, if I don't pray, I'm going to go to hellfire. It's not that I have to pray 
that my hope is to switch that mindset. Not I have to pray. I want to pray. I want to. And there's a big difference in that mindset. If you bring two individuals, same age, same physique, same everything, and pray, let them pray Dhuhr together, or Asr, or Maghrib, or Isha. But one is praying because he's scared he's going to go to hellfire, and one's praying because he loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he wants to pay his dues, and respect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and worship Allah. Even if they spend the same amount of time praying, who do you think will focus more, will concentrate more, will pay attention more, and will feel the sweetness of Salah? Who? The one who wants to, not the one who has to, like not the one that I have to pray, I want to pray. And I, and I hope that what you come, maybe today, I don't know if you'll be able to achieve that, but at least in, in hopefully opens your eyes that I want to pray. But I, in order for you to say that, you've got to understand what it means. Right? What does Salah mean? We define it. Those who attended in the past. I, I, I think they gave you three definitions, right? What does Salah mean? That's good, too. <laughs> <laughs> what is the first one you said? Do you recall? Do you recall? Okay, three things. Now, one in the back, do you remember? I have to be correct. What does Salah mean to you guys? It means prayer. Prayer? Okay, that's a translation of what Salah means. That's good. What Salah means? Yeah, I want the actual meaning. No, I have not, not, not translation. I mean, what salah could mean to you? I mean, it's fine if you say the translation, but means salah, means prayer, means. But I want to use because this tells a lot, says a lot. Say, yes, I mean, it means the boss. Yeah, the boss. Yeah, that's good. Something don't say. I want to talk about the boss. do Yes. That's it. That's it. That's the first meaning. As salah, if you look at the linguistic meaning of as salah, linguistically, the root is for those, do you have Arabic classes in use here, Irvine? Here? No? Yes. So as salah comes from the root, salah, connection. Alright? It comes, the root is sad, lam, and there that ha, marbuta, or, or ta, salah. Connection. So that means when I'm standing up and praying, and that's the one I was missing. Oh, I was thinking, I, where is also? Where are you going? That's the one I was forgetting. Uh, as salah comes from sila, connection. So when I'm praying, the mindset that I need to have, that I'm right now in a relationship. I'm in a relationship. You know, anybody is engaged here? No, everybody wants to be engaged. Like <laughs> Good. Oh, cool. You know when you're engaged, you guys all say you're interested in somebody you have a crush, crush, and all that stuff. You look your best, don't you? And you, you, you comb your beard, your hair, your make sure you scarf, your whatever it is. You look good. Why you want to be? Because while you are engaged in that relationship, or you're speaking to that, to your. Uh, you lose all of that after you get married. Right? But, but it, why you want to make sure that you impress, you pay, you are attentive to what you're saying. If you go for a job interview, if you go to meet your advisor, right? You're waiting for what are they going to say? They're going to advise you. So you pay attention. You will look good. You will smell good. You will pay attention. You know what you're saying as well. Why? There's some sort of a relationship. There's some sort of connection, right? So you are paying attention to that. Do we do the same? Do we have that mindset when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When I'm standing right now, maybe some of us haven't prayed Maghrib or Isha yet. I'm about to pray Allahu Akbar. Is that what you have in your mind? I'm about to engage in a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know what Sayyidina Ali says? If you want Allah to speak to you, just open the book. Which book? The Quran. These are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He directly speaking to, he's directly speaking to you, to everybody in this universe. So you don't have to sit, you know, just open the